Hey, this is AVUnit 4A for CollectionDX.com. In this review, I will be highlighting the transformation, special features, and other notables of the VF-1S Valkyrie Roy Fokker special from the 1982 anime series Super Dimensional Fortress Macross. This set is part of the Origin of Valkyrie line, which was released in 2008 to commemorate the 25th anniversary of the debut of the Macross saga in 1982. The set was originally produced by Takatoku Toys, which unfortunately fell under in 1984 after the series aired despite the success of its toy lines related to the series. Bandai purchased those rights and has owned and reissued several times these 155 scale high metal sets. And so here we are starting out in fighter mode. All three landing gear are completely made of die cast metal wheels and the struts themselves the close the the doors um, and each one is spring powered so you pull back the little tab and that pops out this actually caught me by surprise because I didn't know that I didn't know that this front landing gear was spring powered that caught me by surprise when I first opened the box the back landing gear also are spring powered but then they also have these little doors the inside here which are really nice I like that because it closes up everything makes everything look neat and clean and then again you just pull up on the tab and that opens and that opens so that's pretty cool I like that it's got those doors. the landing gear are supposed to be up here because that's what these you see these uh, kind of triangular shaped objects uh, these are actually supposed to be the landing door lights on here so the landing gear would actually be a little further up but eh, I'm not complaining the four uh, barrels can tilt up and down, and then the turret can turn side to side. Yeah, it bumps into the undercarriage a little bit right there, but it's not a it's not a big deal whatsoever. The jet exhaust nozzles can open and close. It's regrettable that they're not hollow, but eh, I got no complaints. The tails, which were one of, one of the previous problems with the V tails, was that they wouldn't lock into place. You had to kind of mess around with it once it got to here. You had to kind of, it was just a pressure point. It could only go so far. Well, listen to how nice and clicky this is. I love that. I really, really love that. That's great. The wings are a bit of an anomaly for me. I've, all Valkyrie wings are well known to be diagonal. I mean, that's as wide as they are, even in space. But I'm not certain if this is just how the Origin of Valkyrie sets do it, or if this is how the original Takatoku toy did. But these wings can actually open out to 90 degrees perpendicular. Why it is, I don't know. I've seen the wings way back here for, you know, supersonic... I always see the wings. I usually see the wings go no farther than that, but for whatever reason, they go out 90 degrees, which is very unusual. So that is fighter mode of the Valkyrie. Now the transition to Gearwalk mode, which is a very iconic anime robot form. Many imitators, but there is only one Gearwalk landing gear. In the mythos of Macross, the gearwalk mode was actually happened upon in in a, a test flight. And it, it, it was just a spur of the moment. It was accidental transformation. Actually, maybe I should show you up here instead of yakking and not paying attention to what the hell I'm doing. Uh, so that's why it kind of has that half fighter, half... Um, half battle batroid form because it was well it's, it's an accident but it turned out to be pretty good because it happens to be the best of both worlds it's very maneuverable but it can also hover over ground so but it's also got all the weapons available to it so the gear walk mode is iconic as much as it is cool gear walk mode is where posability comes into play because of the original takatoku design the arm, the shoulders, you can see are tilted at an obvious angle here. Very, very obvious angle. You can't 
push it down all the way because that's just the way the toy was designed. So um, you could force it, but then you'd be forcing it, and that wouldn't be a good thing. The shoulders um, actually push back on the wings a little bit, so you know you stick them in their kind of supersonic position. By the way, these wings click very nicely, very nice clicky clicky. Shoulders are also very clicky clicky. The elbows, yeah, the elbows have swivel joints there and there, and then they can also turn outwards as well. The right hand is open. The left hand is not. And the reason the hand is open is because, you guessed it, it comes with a Gatling gun pod. And you can only stick it in the right arm. So that's pretty cool. The little sensor unit up here is the trigger for the five projectiles that are provided with the set, which are these things. Very reminiscent and pretty much the same size as the missiles that go under the wings, which I thought was a really nice touch. The other thing that the gun pod can do, and I'll show you this a little later too, is the set comes with this little accessory clip, clip-on. Now, the arms form the undercarriage of the fighter mode, and then, you know, the gun pod would be stored gun pod would be stored underneath between the engines hanging from the uh, uh, undercarriage. Well, unfortunately, the, the landing gear and the way things are set up in this little sensor on the bottom here, you can't do that. It's just the way things worked out. Later, toys were able to solve that problem, but the Takatoku design, design, they weren't able to do it. So instead, you have this little clip-on. You can put the gun pod in here upside down. And, of course, you can do it with the opposite side as well. So, you can do that. Like I said, it's just a little clip-on, slips on these little, whatever those things are right there. The legs, now that I think about it, the legs uh, are a little more, are, are more limiting in this form than they are in Batroid form. Uh, the hips, you can only push them that far forward, it just locks up. Uh, yeah, you could do the legs stretch that like that but officially it's got the uh, it's got that kind of uh, chicken walker appearance to him and unfortunately because of the the technology of the time the ankles cannot twist forward or backwards so you're pretty much limited in the leg poses that you can get get the the gear walk form into uh, you can twist it like this that looks kind of cool uh, an alternative form is you can also you know leave the leave the tails open if you want to with the uh, with the gear walk mode if you want to or and there's in the other version where the arms are still hanging underneath and then the tails are still open so I love those clicky tails so. now there's a significant difference between the original Takatoku toys, their 155 scale figures, and Bandai's version. This is the 1990 reissue of the VF-1S uh, Super Valkyrie, which I got in 91 for Christmas, which I covered on Collection DX. There's a significant difference, which I learned after I did the filming and the review of all the things for this one. Uh, this is an old toy, by the way. This toy is 15 years old. So, um, the biggest difference is that of the cockpit. The cockpit works differently. And the biggest difference... Maybe I should have thought about this a little more is that the cockpit is screwed shut. It, it, this, this canopy does not come off. What it comes with instead is this, yes, this two-pronged accessory clip-on. What you would do is you would slip it in and it would just latch into the top there like that. And that's how they solved the, or that, that's how Bandai did 
this is this is a change that Bandai made uh, with the clip-on accessory here. Now the Origin of Valkyrie version treats the cockpit differently. This is the original way the Takotoku toys did it in 1982. The cockpit was able to come off. There's a pair of little indents on either side of the canopy. So you actually could take the canopy off and you can actually look around inside there. The canopy is actually, the, the oh, there is one modification though, is that the canopy is kind of tinted, kind of brown color, whatever it is. But the canopy could be replaced with a skull and crossbones shield version. Which you tell me that doesn't look kind of cool. Why would a future, futuristic space fighter need a cockpit canopy, I ask you. So, we'll get along with the transformation now. One of the key things that made the Takotoku Valkyries so popular uh, was that they were, you didn't, with the exception of the canopy, yes, with the exception of the clip-on for the, the arm for the Gatling gun pod, the thing that made them so interesting, so popular, is that all previous Valkyries that had been released, and this is something that plagued toy and model designers for literally a decade and a half, is how you get the legs, the hips, from over here to down here. Well, you couldn't do it. And so what Takotoku Toys did is they incorporated these metal bars. This metal bar right here that actually swings it down. And then it there's a little uh, peg that fits into these this little slot here. Um, ordinarily, there would be, in the, in the official line art, there's a, a pair of hydraulic pistons that flips down from up there to down there and then there's some kind of post which pops out of here hooks into the hip and then the pistons let go and flip back up that which is why you don't see anything in between the chest the upper torso and the hip Because of that change with the cockpit design, I kept catching myself. Ordinarily, you know, I'd fold this thing down and, and then I'd slip the canopy shield in. Well, I had to retrain myself, which was kind of funny. And then you have the VF-1S Valkyrie in Batroid mode. Very fuzzy Batroid mode. Posability is completely available now in this form. Legs fold all the way forward like this. 90 degrees, 90 degrees, done. If you want to be creepy, you can do that too. The legs also can fold legs also can fold backwards but they'll bump into the wings which you could do if you want to be really creepy you can fold the wings backward like that now there actually is a limit to how far you can pull the max so the upper leg will not twist any further than that um, oh yeah by the way you can pose the Valkyrie with the wings open because they, they actually do open once in a great while Usually the, you know, the missiles are still hanging on to the wings. And, but this design, there's just, you can see there's no space in there for any missile ports or any, or any missile pods or anything like that. So, yeah, you can open up the wings, but there isn't really any reason to. The arms are no longer, if you can imagine the gearwalk mode with the nose pointed towards the camera, uh, you could imagine that the arms ordinarily would be tilted outwards at the shoulder but it's not now so that's a good thing the head is also the original uh, Takotoku design and you'll see it's very very blocky very odd shape to it very 
unanime accurate. It's still got the wide visor, but it's it's got sharp it's got sharp right angles on it. It's very unusual, even though it's you know still got the four uh, laser cannons on it or whatever it is. And you can see it actually always looks it always looks upward. Now you can you know pull it forward a little bit and it'll start looking down. But in order to set it correctly for the transmission, you actually point it upwards. On the other hand, the 1990 reissue solved that problem and provided us with a far more anime accurate looking head. Far more accurate. Um, it didn't have the ribbed neck in back, but, you know, it actually has the, the kind of captain's cap that leans over the visor, and the visor is actually round, as is the faceplate. The cannon, the laser cannons were also redesigned as well, but only minimally, so. Actually, the laser cannons are supposed to be white. So there is... There are a few differences between the original Takatoku Toys version and the one that Bandai released several years later. There's about a See, there's about a six-year gap between, a six to eight-year gap between when these were made and then when this came out. Ladies and gentlemen, a CollectionDX.com exclusive. I pointed out the little projectiles that come with the gun pot over there. Well, notice that all five of them are on here. <gasps> Ava, no, no, Ava, you don't, no! God, that thing cost 80 bucks. How could you? Oh, no. Oh, God. Oh, God. Son of a gun. Oh, how could you do that? Oh, what are you thinking? Oh, God. Oh, God. Do you realize how much that could be worth? Oh, shut up. This is a toy. It's meant to be played with. You weren't about worry about keeping something intact. Keep the Yamato Valkyries intact. Those are going to be expensive later on. And so what you do... And keep in mind, I haven't done this for about 10 years now, because I, because, you know, that, that 1990 reissue, it used to have five of these as well. So what I'm doing right now, I haven't done for about 10 years now, and what do you know, it still works. And now all you do, if I remember how powerful these little suckers are, is you just pull down on the tab and, ow, yikes. Ladies and gentlemen, that was live. That was not rehearsed. That actually hurt me. Uh, of course, this was 80s toy technology, so they weren't worried about you swallowing such little things, nor were they worried about you poking out your eye. So this thing is about an inch. It's about an inch long, and it's, oh, definitely small enough to stick up your nose if you're a toddler. Uh, but the range is most impressive. This has usually got to be... Uh, on a flat surface, if it didn't, if if I didn't have all this drop off beneath the shooting shelf, I'd say this would go at least four to four to six feet is how far this thing would fly. I mean, this thing will fly. This right here, ladies and gentlemen, is the standard by which I judge all other large-scale transformable Valkyrie sets, be they toys or models. Uh, Takatoku Toys was the first to create a Valkyrie that had minimally invasive transformation which had few accessories to you know recreate all the, uh, the the features that a Valkyrie had the only thing the only feature you don't have is the shoulder strap for the gun pot so you can actually hang it over the shoulder but I didn't miss that at all I don't miss it now and I didn't miss it when I was what let's see 91 I would have been eight something like that so for me to cover the Takotoku toy Valkyries like this as, as an older collector is just a, a very nostalgic, very, very, uh, um, very wonderful experience. And to this day, they are still great designs. Yeah, they got sharp edges on them. Yeah, they got a super powerful gun pod sitting on them. Yeah, they've got joints that are really tight. I mean, I had to fight. I mean, I really have to fight those hip joints every time I do it. And I also have to be, because I learned my lesson with the, the 1990 reissue, I have to be careful uh, how much pressure I apply to the tails, because I know their, their limits quite well. But on the other hand, 
compared to the 1990 reissue, the nice thing for me was that, you know, I got the surprise of the, I mean, I had the spring-powered doors on here, or I had the spring-powered landing gear, but the doors were not there. It's just a big old gap. Uh, the spring-powered nose gear, I was not expecting that. I was not expecting the, uh, uh, the, the removable canopy. I thought that the slide-over canopy was just because they couldn't do it originally in 1982. So uh, the only thing, the probably the biggest letdowns for me is that the head is the squarish version rather than the 90 reissue version, which was more accurate, which I showed you earlier. The other thing that struck me as odd is the decoration, and that is majority of things you see. The only thing that was not applied when I got out of the box were these kind of L-shaped um, shoulder decals on the front and back. I had to apply those myself. Everything else you see on here was pre-applied uh, with, you know, stamped on or whatever technique they use. Uh, all these warning labels, by the way, I haven't really focused on them, but these warning labels, they actually say, you know, watch out for this air vent, make sure that this is depressurized before you use this tool and this tool. Caution, hot air blast. I mean, there's a whole freaking decal sheet of things that I could put on here. It's 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 outrageous. I mean, there's easily 30 printed areas on here already, and that's not even talking about the painted areas. If I had one complaint, it would be, let's, to Bandai, I would say, thank you very much for bringing us this whole thing, but why don't you make most of these decals so that I can choose? I mean, I can understand the UN Spacey, uh, the VF, the, 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 the stabilizers on there. I can understand you know this being here and this being here but majority of the warning labels on here I wouldn't have put on uh, I would have liked to have kept it anime accurate I mean by the time I'm done with this video and everything is said and done with the review on CDX uh, I might add a few more decals to it and then I'm done with it and it's by no means spoiled of course with the warning labels around there it's more uh, realistic but I would like to have had that option as, as a collector, I would like to choose whether it's anime accurate or whether it's real. And the other thing, you know, I would have liked it if they'd used the Bandai's version of the head rather than Takatoku's version. Yeah, nice nostalgic trip, but it would have been nice to have that head on there. Uh, one last thing I have to mention before I close this out. I wouldn't even be doing any of these Origin of Valkyrie reviews if it wasn't for the generosity of CollectionDX.com's own CFO and co-owner Shogun Dan. He literally didn't have any time to cover these four sets and he gave all of them to me. And I can understand, th this is a big nostalgic trip for me, but for him it was a very expensive this this one set alone cost eighty dollars off the shelf, which is you know that's 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 pretty expensive in two thousand nine, considering they're only about forty or fifty dollars way back when, and so for him to send me these four reissues, this Origin of Augury line, for him to send those, man, Shogun Dan, I literally I feel your pain. I mean that would be an awful experience for me to pass them on. So you you made the right decision. You, you made someone very happy. It was like Christmas 91 all over again when I saw that four-foot box come in from UPS. That was, that was awesome. So Shogun Dan, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. You, you, you made me a very happy guy. And so this is AV Unit 4A for CollectionDX.com signing off. の
1982 anime series Super Dimensional Fortress Macross. This particular set this particular set belongs to the Origin of Valkyrie line, which was released in 2008 as a complimentary reissue. This set was reissued. This set. This set was reissued in two. Uh, this set was released in night. This set was released in 2008 as part of the Origin of Valkyrie line, which commemorates the 25th anniversary of the beginning of the of this. This set is part of the Origin of Valkyrie line, which commemorates the 25th anniversary of the beginning of the Macross saga. Oh, finally, Jesus, that took me what a minute to say that. Holy. Oh, well, maybe. Four to four to six feet is how far this thing would fly. I mean, this thing will fly. I'll do it again, just for nostalgic sake. Oh no! Oh man! I can't believe I lost that. Well, I'll go get it after I turn off the camera. So, anyways, that was a CDX exclusive. Not only did you get to see me hurt myself with this thing, uh, but you also got to see what's actually underneath the shooting shelf. Maybe I should censor that later. Oh well.